Um, hopefully this is interesting. Leave me a comment and let me know if this is interesting to you. Hey guys, I'm coming to you from my bathroom today. I've been cleaning out the cabinets and stuff and so I thought maybe it would be interesting to show you just kind of through the cabinets and like what some of my products are for every day and also just some of my other favorites that I have. So. Um, hopefully this is interesting. Leave me a comment and let me know if this is interesting to you. Okay, so we'll start with the countertop. I do like to keep a clean countertop, but usually my Clarisonic brush is sitting out because um, I just use it at night and then I just leave it out um, usually with the brush head off to dry out for the next day. So unless I go a couple days without using it, it usually just sits out because it's all kind of drying out. I usually use the like sensitive brush. It's the one with the black inner ring, but I do have two other brush heads that I keep on hand. So this one, I forget what it's called, like cashmere or something, but they're really, really long, really soft bristles. Um, I find that this is kind of too soft for me to do anything effectively, so I don't use that that often unless my skin is feeling like really sensitive. And then this is, I believe this is just like the regular brush, which has the blue inner ring, and this one's almost like too firm for me or too hard. So that's why I usually go with the sensitive and that's kind of my normal. But um, this is, I guess, otherwise the standard brush. So I don't use that one too much. And this is like not at all sponsored, but a quick funny story about the Clarisonic is that my face really was just like a mess. I have very combination skin and I get little like dry areas and breakouts in other areas and it's a mess. Since I've been using the Clarisonic and it's been a few years now, I really haven't had the same type of issues that I used to. And the funny thing is we had these people come in to my work um, like a year or two ago from like a place that does facials and they put your face in this thing that analyzes it and it tells them like where the dry patches are, where the oily patches, what you, you know, what they would recommend you do. And now they have nothing to gain by not telling me about any problems because they like give facials and sell uh, skincare products, but they were like, your skin's pretty much good. We don't have to tell you anything. And I was like, seriously, you're not trying to sell me something here? So I just thought that was funny because I was like, my face is a mess, but I guess it's not as bad as I always thought. Okay, so continuing on into the actual cabinet part and I didn't, clean anything here in advance, but I'll just kind of go through my daily routine stuff. So it's pretty similar morning and night. Um, I use this Bremen dark circle eraser, uh, usually just once a day in the mornings. I don't know if it makes a difference. I kind of have always had dark circles under my eyes, so hopefully that's doing something. And then morning and night, I use an eye cream. And for the last few years, I've been using um, this Kiehl's uh, creamy avocado eye treatment. So I actually invested in the larger container. This was $48, but I've had this for a long time and I use it twice a day, every day. Usually after that, I put on this like prescription cream. Let me open it up. So this is just a big generic tub of white cream. And this was for those dry patches I mentioned. So years ago, I went to a dermatologist about this and they made this uh, cream. It's like a compound of hydrocortisone and something that I looked it up and it's like used for diaper rash. But you can see this is a huge tub. This is my second one in my life. My first one I had for about 12 years and still had half of it left and I've like given it away to people um, but decided maybe I should get a new one after 12 years. So this one currently is um, I think seven years old and you can see I've barely touched it because I really just use the smallest little amount uh, on my finger and I just put that on a couple different spots on my face but that's morning and night. And then if I do have any kind of uh, breakout, I recently got this a cure um, spot treatment. Um, I think at Target, which uh, I really like it, but I've used you know regular like Clearasil and stuff. Or if it's especially bad and it's daytime, 
I will use this Rodan and Fields Unblemish treatment. It comes in, you can see there's kind of two chambers in the pump and two little uh, pumps. So you pump one and pump the other and they kind of mix in your hand. Um, so I guess they're like ingredients that react with each other. I've had this for a while. Like I said, I really just use it for like really bad ones. So it's lasted me a while here. And then for daytime, I usually go with this Korean BB cream. Uh, this is real Korean straight from Korea. Uh, I actually, I've been using this for years as well. It's from Skin79 and they have a gazillion different varieties of um, BB cream, but I use this I guess it's called Super Plus. I don't know what part of this is the actual name. It comes in this gold uh, container. And the one thing I don't like about it is it's not really like portable for traveling because it's just like this. There's no cap or it doesn't like, you know, lock shut or anything. And the whole top of it is what you press down to dispense it at this little hole. So when I travel, I actually take another brand, but I prefer this one. It's got SPF 30. Uh, it's a good, it's like nicely moisturizing. I don't know about, well, this is all in Korean. <laughs> the first one I had, had stuff in English and it had, you know, some other things that it claimed to do. So I don't know about any of that. This says it's anti-wrinkle and whitening. So I don't know about those claims, but uh, for just a tinted moisturizer kind of thing and hopefully SPF, uh, that seems to work pretty well. Um, at night for a moisturizer, sometimes I'll use like a clean and clear or um, you know some type of like anti-acne moisturizer if I'm feeling like I'm breaking out a little bit. Or otherwise, I've been using some oils. So this is the uh, Beauty Counter Number no. Three Balancing Facial Oil, which I have talked about here before. I've been using this for a little while now, um, at least a year, and really like it. It's kind of counterintuitive to like put an oil on your face, but um, it's it's very nicely moisturizing, and I feel like it is balancing. Or I've also been using the Rodan and Fields um, Active Hydration Serum. This is actually a pretty cool container, I'll show it to you. So the way that this container works, as you unscrew it, see the top comes up and becomes a little pump. And so when you take it out, it's like a dropper. And when you press this button, it dispenses the exact right amount that you need. I actually don't even push it all the way because it dispenses a lot. And then when you close it again, that little button goes down. So that's pretty cool. And then also in the daytime, I've been using, again for the past year or so, uh, this Clarins. It says it's a, like just like a multi something cream, which I think means it's for your whole face but I actually got it for a neck cream because my mom has been um, very adamant that I start using a neck cream. And I don't know, she had me use an eye cream since like high school, so she knows what she's talking about. So now I'm on neck cream. But I just use this one in the daytime because I'm not sure if it says it on here, but this one does have SPF and so it seems silly to use it like day and night. At night I just take whatever moisturizer I'm using on my face and rub it down my neck. But when I got this, it was a set of like one thing for night and then this one for day and I used up the night one, but I still have this left. So just use it in the daytime. And then down on this bottom shelf, I guess I probably should have started here. So like I brush my teeth, obviously, whatever kind of toothpaste. Um, I'm a convert to the electric toothbrush. I. Uh, didn't want to use one for a long time and my dentist every time I went was trying to sell me one So finally one time I got it and I've been using it ever since for years This is like my the third one that I'm on now because they keep dying on me But um, it definitely makes a huge difference in the evenings. I use some kind of makeup remover So uh, lately I've been using this like micellar water. I'm not sure how you say it um just on a cotton pad and you can see there's sort of like a separation here of whatever's in it, it's, you know, an oil and water kind of thing. So mix it up a little before you pour that out. 
um, but I think I showed this previously in a shopping haul. It was actually from Primark and it's a huge bottle, you can see, so I'm only like a third of the way through it now, so this will last me a while, but I'll, I've used other types of makeup removers or wipes and things. Um, this is my favorite face wash. This is the Dermalogica Special Cleansing Gel. And I actually had gotten a sample of this in some some beauty box. I don't know, because I don't get a ton of them, but something with samples I had gotten this. And I really liked it. Like I said, my face is just like weird. And this is the first face wash that didn't really seem to irritate and actually helped improve my skin. So uh, I've been using this for a couple of years now and it's pretty much my go-to. I don't usually travel with it. Usually I just have like a small sample size of some kind of face wash that I'll travel with and I definitely notice the difference like by the end of the week I'm ready to come home and use my Dermalogica and my Clarisonic again. And the last thing in here that's kind of one of my favorites, I've talked about this before too. This is um, the Amore Pacific. Uh, it says it's a treatment enzyme peel, but it's sort of like an exfoliating powder. So I got this from Sephora. I had asked for a recommendation for, I asked for a face mask and this is what they gave me, but it actually is so much better than what I was asking for. So it really um, is just a really gentle, exfoliating kind of scrub it's just a very fine powder so like after you wash your face you just use your damp hands and um, when you when you pour this out it gives you just the right portion uh, and you just kind of rub it around rub it on your face rinse it off and you know you can do it one time but if you do it for like a couple days in a row you really really notice a result from that so I'll just do one more section of the cabinet here because it also has some more like everyday products uh, so I have tried many shampoos and conditioners especially over the past year I was really switching it up a lot but I came back to my favorite uh, Garnier Fructis uh, sleek and shine and then after I wash my hair I always use this sleek and shine anti-frizz serum so you can see I'm almost done with this one, but I've gone through many of these bottles and I don't know, again, it sort of seems counterintuitive. Like, so this says it's argan oil and apricot and it's kind of like a little dabble do ya thing. You just use that very small amount and I have long hair. So, um, you know, otherwise you'll kind of weigh it down, but this has been my go-to thing. I keep coming back to it every once in a while. If I don't use that, um, I do like this blow dry perfecter. It makes your hair nice and soft. These other, these other things in here I've kind of given up on. <laughs> um, the other thing I use on occasion is this Redken Extreme Anti-Snap. They sold me that once at the hairdressers. I don't know, it's supposed to be for like if your hair's breaking, which I don't feel like mine is, but I use that from time to time. And the other one I like is this Vidal Sassoon Pro Series Repair spray it's supposed to be a spray but I actually just spray a little bit onto my hands and then run them through my hair um, but it's also like a heat protectant which is good and I think this is another one that I had gotten a sample of and liked it so much that I went and bought it so samples work <laughs> and then I guess one more area that we can look at with some things I kind of use every day uh, this drawer has um, a lot of hair stuff so my dry shampoo I love the Dove refresh care volume and fullness dry shampoo um, I've also used their unscented one and it actually it kind of smells like burning so um, I'm sure you know I usually go for unscented types of things but in this case I think whatever this scent is at least a little bit better um, this um, Garnier anti-humidity hairspray um, I have never used hairspray I gotten it for something like years ago and never used it and I started using it just like on my part and the front part of my hair to kind of hold down the little flyaways and um, you know frizzy bits that show up and I actually just spray it on my hands and then kind of like run them over my part and um, this is the makeup setting spray that I've been using lately. This is just CoverGirl brand uh, look lockup. But I actually was 
shocked how well it works. I used it all summer through you know the heat and humidity and it has been amazing so um, and also it just like spritzes really nice because the one um, I had been using before this I actually replaced because the spray got like all clogged up and it was pretty much unusable so I've been really pleased with this one and it was not expensive at all oh, one other thing I just wanted to document in case you saw this hair dryer just sitting out on the back of the toilet that's not where it usually lives um, this is a Conair hair dryer that I had for years and everything I'm saying was for years I guess I don't replace stuff a lot <laughs> but um, I had this for um, probably around six years and I went to dry my hair the other morning and um, it had this horrible burning plastic smell immediately so I don't know something must have gone in here so I replaced it uh, at first with something I got at Ulta and I was like really disappointed with it for a $50 hair dryer it was so cheap feeling so I instead went to Bed Bath & Beyond and used my 20% off coupon and got another Conair because I like this one so much but I, I just wanted to kind of document like the differences between them so here's my other new hair dryer and you can see they're pretty similar so this one is the Conair Infinity Pro and um, I mean it's beautiful first of all but um, I did just want to like make note of the fact that this one feels a lot more robust than the new one and I don't know if it's because of like cheapness of materials or um, or maybe they've just improved things to where it's you know lighter this is a really heavy hair dryer I will say that and so this one feels a lot lighter but um, just a couple little quick differences so like this old one to take the nozzle off you have to squeeze these two little buttons on the side and the new one does not have any such buttons you just pull it off so um, it does luckily stay in place pretty well um, it stays in the direction you put it. That other expensive but cheap feeling one I got at Ulta, the nozzle was just like spin freely, so that was not cool. And uh, the other thing I noticed is this one, the back um, kind of hinges open so you can like clean it out um, if it gets dusty inside. And this one does not have a hinge. It does open, but it's like a pinch and squeeze thing and the whole back of it comes off. So not quite the hinge situation. And then I guess just a thing with hair dryers in general now, it seems. I guess it's been a few years since I've shopped for one. Instead of like switches that you slide, they all seem to have switches that you switch. something I noticed but yeah I guess this guy's going away and this is the new hair dryer in town so I hope that was remotely interesting if you did like it don't forget to give it a thumbs up and um, leave me a comment just so I know <laughs> um, that you enjoyed looking through my cabinets and if not uh, I'll probably do something different next week so you should still subscribe if you haven't yet and I'll see you next time bye